Giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakwadash, double honors to our apostles and elders here at Great Millstone. Just really quick, just to highlight again that this individual is uh, a big phony. He is not what he says he is. And this is for any of you sincere watchers out there. If you happen to watch uh, this individual and you happen to actually believe that what he's doing is out of sincerity, you're mistaken. Starting with the apostles, Elders of Great Milton, we've been uh, we've revealed through the Holy Spirit that this individual is just hired. Um, he's an agent working for the system. Uh, he's a, a Edomite in particular. I believe he's also of the same uh, seed of Amalek as well. He hates the fact that we, the Israelites, that we call ourselves the chosen people of the Lord, the so-called Black, Latino, Native American. He's moved to anger and wrath to, to to basically base his whole channel and his life off of coming against the Hebrew Israelites. No, you know, there's there's nothing new when you read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. When we, the Israelites, were given the command to start building our own temple, it was the heathen nations that were angry at that and hindered our building. Because as long as our people are asleep, they're OK. Right. As long as our people are believing in Christianity and anything other than the Hebrew Israelites, then uh, this guy has no problem. But the moment we say, look, we the Hebrew Israelites, we believe in the Messiah. We believe in Yahweh Shai. We believe he's a so-called black man. Now he has all the energy in the world to come and try to stop our building. And that's his whole goal. That's his whole motive. He's a phony because he isn't a true evangelist. You know, evangelist goes back to the defending the gospel, defending the existence of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. But when it comes to, he has shown multiple times that when it comes to Amalek or the, the state of Israel and their actions, he can only support them. He doesn't condemn their actions or anything like that. He even used their own talking points. He has nothing to say regarding their belief and how they deny the Messiah. They deny the Holy Trinity. They, they deny, they, yeah, they deny the Trinity. Now, we don't teach there's a Trinity. We teach there's the Heavenly Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those are three separate powers, but they all work towards the same goal. They all represent Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. We actually believe that uh, he said to Sarnetta that his main issue with the Hebrew Israelites is that uh, he believes that the Son of Man and Yah the, the, the Heavenly Father are the same. We don't teach that, but he said that's a, that's a big deal. But he doesn't, has nothing to say when it comes to the people uh, in the state of Israel and their belief, because their belief, they actually um, disrespect the Messiah. They call the Messiah all type of names. You know, even that uh, one uh, devil, Sarah Silverman, she joked on stand up and she said that she she's happy that uh, her people killed the Messiah and they'll do it again if they have to. In the state of Israel, uh, the Christians, people who are Christians in the state of Israel today are basically treated like trash. There's videos of them getting and so to speak, beat up um, for teaching the Christian, for going out and teaching the Messiah there when they actually walk with the cross on their shirt or they was walking with a cross, they spit at the ground to show you their attitude toward the Messiah. So in a sense, they reject the Christianity altogether. But he has nothing to say when it regards those people at all. Right. And anytime they do anything that's considered, you know, you got the UN calling them, you know, genocide. They're calling what they're committing genocide. They're calling them hypocrites. They're they're calling for peace. Uh, they're calling for war to stop, especially in the land of Palestine. But when it came to this guy, he said that, you know, they're justified in what they're doing. And uh, he has nothing negative to say. So what happened in the, in New York City, they found that tunnel. Right. Dealing with Amalek. And they all it was also linked. It goes directly to guess what? A, a children's school. They also show videos and pictures of mattresses with children's clothes and all this stuff down there. So one begs the question, what is going on? So you would think that a so-called evangelist would have something to say negative about it and defend the gospel. Stand up for his right. Nope. He does exactly what he's paid to do. And he I believe he's just doing it because he knows that 
those are really his brethren that he see on TV getting called out and exposed, moves him to wrath and anger to come out here and to say, oh, we're going to talk about what's really going on. Right. I don't watch the video because I'm not watching it, but a brother basically got a skim of it. And he said that he's defending the actions and he's trying to say that that tunnel was used for work. So, you know, he's proved that he's a phony whenever it comes to these people. And when it comes to their religion, he has nothing to say. He'll shun you if you come on there and say, well, look, according to the scriptures, why don't you have anything to say? They deny the Messiah. Why don't you have anything to say? He has nothing to say. But if you if you an Israelite, he has all the smoke for you, showing you that he is not a true evangelist. He doesn't really stand up for the Bible. He doesn't defend the existence of the Messiah. And this is just to show you that he's one big phony. So here's a clip that a brother took from his show. Tent. All right. All right. Here we go. By the way, mods, can you guys be extra vigilant tonight? I'm OK with insults and threats against me, but. If it veers over into just the hardcore, stereotypical, predictable anti-Semitic comments, let's just get them out of here. I don't have time for it. I hate anti-Semitism, and I just don't have really tolerance for it. So go ahead and get them out if they come in. So that's his attitude. Um, he doesn't like anti-Amalek. Well, uh, first of all, that word isn't even in the scriptures. <laughs> it's not even in the scripture. So you see that. He holds, takes hold on uh, their arguments, their basing points. So, you know, and he already knows the deal. He knows who's really watching. It's the Israelites. He doesn't, he's not going to quote any scriptures. He's not going to have nothing to say. When it comes to his own people, he turns the blind eye. He's not a true defender of the gospel. He doesn't try to spirit by the spirit. He is a respecter of persons. You know, according to his uh, reputation, he calls himself a Bible defender. But according to the Bible, if you believe in the Messiah, you have to stand up for the Messiah. And you have to condemn those who don't accept the Messiah and you can't wish them Godspeed, which he does. So he doesn't like the Hebrew Israelites, but and we believe in the Messiah. OK, but he's uh, joined uh, to best friends with the people who spit on the Messiah, who openly curse the Messiah. And he defends them no matter what. So according to the scriptures, we are to acknowledge him as being a phony. He is not a true defender of the gospel. And he's just another wolf in sheep's clothing that he's been outed and you've been outed. Uh, the book of Sirach 13 verse 15 says, every beast loveth his like and every man loveth his neighbor. All flesh consorteth according to kind. A man and a man will cleave to his like. Yeah, so it says all flesh consorteth according to his two kind, and a man will cleave to his like. Right. So, and the word consort, I looked it up. In this sense, we're talking a verb, and it says habitually, okay, it says associate with someone, typically with the disapproval of others, right? Uh, example, quote, you chose to consort with the enemy. So, you know, habitually you chose to associate yourself with such or to be agreed with. Right. So when it says, you know, every beast loveth his like and every man loveth his neighbor, all flesh consorteth to kind and a man will cleave to his like. So all the flesh will consort to whom they with. So the birds, birds will consort with one another. Certain birds will consort to certain birds. Right. Dogs, animals, right? So, and it goes on to say, what fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb, so the sinner with the godly? What agreement is there between a hyena and a dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor? Exactly. So those will, con those will consort with their class, just like people. Okay. When it says all flesh consorted according to kind, like I said, you got birds. They consort to one another because they're birds. Birds of a feather will flock together. Right. Different animals, you know, dogs and such get along. And you got cats, domestic cats and you got the big cats. They get along. Right. And then, you know, the rats will consort with their fellow rats. OK, so, you know, the, the flesh will consort with who? So I'm not surprised to see him say that, you know, when according to the scripture, you should have no fellowship with such that deny the Messiah. But you you're best friends with them. You advocate for them. And you're on their side, even though genocide is being committed in the earth and he has nothing bad to say. But 
We the Israelites, we go out there, you know, the poor. We're not hurting nobody. We're harmless. We go out and we teach that the Heavenly Father and the Son is so-called black man. And now he has all the energy in the world to try to come after us. Okay. So it's like, well, wait a minute. But, you know, like the scripture says, you know, the, 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 the lambs will consort with the lambs, right? The goats with the goats and, you know, the rats with the rats. That's what they're going to do. Now, if you go to the comment board, let's read some comments showing you that he's losing credibility and respect. He's over with. It's done for. You can never approach another GMS camp, period. Because approach my camp, I'm going straight to the book. We're going to talk about Amalek. Oh, you're going to we're going to talk about Judaism. We're going to talk about these religions that deny the Messiah that which you claim you believe in. We're going to go to first John, which I want to read really quick. Uh, first John verse four, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets are going out into the world. That's our job. So we have to try the spirit by the spirit. And we have shown we have telling you that he uh, Haman has been tried by the spirit and he has proven to be a false prophet. He has choose, pro, proven to be a false evangelical defender of the gospel, whatever he calls his title, because according to the scriptures, he will not do what the scripture says, because it goes on to say, hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesses that the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is that spirit of an anti-Messiah. Where if ye had heard it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of Yahweh, little children, ye have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. You know, to say I won't tolerate any anti Amalek. That's of the world. That word isn't in the scriptures. That's an invented word. Why don't you break the word down? Why don't you break the word down? Because if he walked to our camp, he would try to label us anti Amalek. I would ask him to break the word down. What does the word mean? Well, you got the word anti, which means against, and then you got that word. But if you go to the scriptures, if I can prove to you that I am Shem, how can I be anti Shem when I am Shem? But you see, he just you he'll just use their talking points. It says, We are of Yahweh, he knoweth we he that knoweth Yahweh heareth us, he that is not of Yahweh heareth not us, whereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So you got two truths out there. You got the spirit of truth and you got the spirit of error. Okay. It goes on to say in chapter 3, maybe it's chapter 2, this is a scripture that is kryptonite. You probably won't ever catch him reading this on live. This is First John, maybe it's Second John. Let's type in anti-Messiah. Okay, First John 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time as ye have heard that anti-Messiah shall come. Even now are there many anti-Messiahs, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy Ones that ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know the truth. Soccer, because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that there and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Yahweh Shah is the Messiah. He is an anti Messiah that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same have not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that when he heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. 
Now we, the Israelites, we acknowledge the Son and the Father. We acknowledge. But you know who does not when you look up the belief of Judaism. Judaism denies the New Testament altogether. Okay, so according to our belief, according to the Bible, we would label them as anti-Messiahs and they would they would happily call themselves anti-Messiahs. So second John at the one uh, verse nine, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of the Messiah is not Yahweh. It's like a half not Yahweh. He that abideth in the doctrine of Yahweh Shah, he has both the father and the son. And that's what an evangelical does. It goes back to the word defend. It's defending the gospel. It's defending the, the, the belief that Yahweh Shai, the son of man, came in the flesh. He died for the sins of the elected nation of Israel and that he's sitting on the right hand side of the heavenly father. There are many that will deny his existence. A true believer will sit there and say, well, I believe that he came in the flesh. He is. Came, he came in the flesh. And according to my teachings, OK, you are anti-Messiah. And it goes on to say, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. So by default, Judaism is a part of that. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. When you go into the word God speed, it goes into Shalom, which means peace. Peace. When he's on camera, Haman is on camera wishing well, these same people who don't believe in the Messiah. So according to the book, he is disqualified from having that title of being an evangelical defender of the gospel. He is a big phony. Okay. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds, because that means they are of the, the same. They are of the same. If we go back to the scripture again, Sirach 13, verse 16, all flesh consorteth according to kind. And a man will cleave un of a man will cleave to his like. So, like I said, the birds go birds of a feather will flock together. The rats will consort with their fellow brother rats. They gonna have each other's back. That's just how it is. Um, and it's really and this is proof why Israelites shouldn't have no dealings with them. Don't you see? He's just a devil looking to build a case. But you got certain Israelite leaders of other groups who are friends. They're OK with uh, Haman. Why are they OK with Haman? Because he says good things about them, because these leaders and these Israelite uh, groups aren't actual leaders. They aren't applying the scriptures. They are a respecter of persons. They, you know, as long as he speaks well of them, then they're OK with them. You know, and listen, you can't trust individuals like that. Them guys over there at Sakar, you can't trust individuals like that when they put the doctrine and the scriptures to the side to fill their own bellies. You know, it's it's well, he speaks well of me, so he cool with me. Whereas the brothers will say, look, don't you see he's a devil? He's just looking to build a case. He's really not on our page. He's just trying to set us up. Well, he's cool with me. Because he speaks well of me. And I'm, I'm I'm trying to use this platform to get my name out there. And I want to be respected worldwide. But the moment he he does something against you, then it's, okay, let's bring out all the scriptures proving you that he's a devil. You cannot trust individuals like that. Right? Hey, but you, you know what? Just like, you know, birds flutter, flock together. The birds will tend to like snakes. Will also attend, you know, consort with other snakes. You know, someone who will put the doctrine and the Bible to the side to fill their own belly. You cannot trust individuals like that. They will sell you out for their own personal gain. The snakes will consort with the snakes. Let's go to the comment board. One guy says, if the BHI, which he's saying the Hebrew Israelites, was digging tunnels in the middle of NYC preparing for the coming Messiah, I wonder if you would be so sympathetic. Hmm. Somebody said, I don't agree with anything the Hebrew Israelite says at all, but you do have a point. Oh, people are starting to see the hypocrisy. Okay. 
Someone else said, a few guys said, he said, with all due respect, Heyman, my brother, the spawning comment had nothing to do with anti-Emelik. It's a video game term used for items and characters that appear from seemingly nowhere. Somebody also said, I think the spawning reference is a video game talk. As a gamer myself, we say that a lot when we like to see NPCs pop out of nowhere. Oh, okay. So that goes to show you that in this video, he was having no tolerance of anything that could be resorted to what he think finds offensive. They, I guess they use the word spawning, you know, probably trying to make a joke and he was having none of it. And it's like, whoa, bro, relax, calm down. But, you know, like, you know, like we said, the rats will consort with the fellow rats. That just made me go to Genesis chapter four. When you deal with Cain, he said that he was a fugitive and a vagabond. As he says here in Genesis four, verse 14, behold, thou hast driven me out from this day from the face of the earth and from thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. When you go to that word uh, fugitive, the word vagabond means tra tra traveler. You basically mean you're not accepted nowhere. The word fugitive in the Hebrew, nawaya, which means to quiver, totter, shake, you know, tremble. You're afraid, right? You're afraid. So the reason he's acting like a tyrant on this video saying, I don't, I won't accept nothing. You, anybody say anything about anything, absolutely shutting it down. So somebody made a spawning comment. You immediately took that as an offense. And I guess you banned him. You probably gave him a verbal lashing as well. It's like, bro, calm down. What's the, oh, you're afraid because according to the scripture, you just like, I believe you and, uh, Amalek, you are Amalek. That's why you say that he said his, his, uh, father is from Germany. And guess what? Guess where a lot of them MLS came out of, spawned out of Germany. So I believe deep down he knows that his roots goes back. So he's just defending his people. You know, he's just an actor. He's he's a he's an agent. He's a deceiver. He's not a real Christian. He doesn't actually believe in the Messiah. He's just set up to try to dis distract and uh, turn away as many Israelites as he possibly can. The people on his comment board that said. I wonder if you would have said this about the Israelites, though. Those were Jake. Jake said that. So Jake don't even believe in the truth, but even they could see this man's a hypocrite. It's showing out, man. You know, call all y'all by Shemuel Shai. The focus is back on Emelech, and he's going to show. This guy is not a real believer. You know, he's Haman, man. Who is Haman? Read the book of Esther. Haman and the reincarnation. And I'll have you know, Haman, the trap that you are looking to set for us, May Yahweh Bashim Shah, just as he righteously executed in the past, make that same snare you looking to uh, set us set us up with, may it fall upon your own head. So you're quivering, you know. That's that's Esau Edom. He's shaky. He's a victim, you know. He's got he, he just he just knows he's guilty. So that's why he's acting the way he's acting. So for you people out there to know. This guy is a phony. According to the scripture, he is not a true defender of the gospel. You can't, you can't, you know, and if you, if you want to try it, go ahead and try it. Next time you go on your live, say, well, listen, I ask you a question. As a Christian, what do you have to say about Judaism? What do you have to say about the things that's going on over there? And I guarantee you, he's going to shut you down <laughs> because he's not a true believer. He's, he's just the agent set up to come after the Israelites because he's angry that we're coming back to our nationality. That's all it is. That's what you, and, and that's what you Israelites on the comment board don't, that you follow him. You fail to realize as long as you aren't claiming your true heritage, he's okay with that. It's the moment we wake up to that we're Israelites. Now it's a problem. He's not a real defender of the gospel. He's a phony. Just like T.D. Jakes, just like Creflo Dollar, you go find out all these people who call themselves Christians and et cetera. When they get pushed to the test, when when they are forced to stand up for what's right, when they're forced to defend the gospel, they all fail because they're all a bunch of phonies. Book of Ezra, verse four. 
Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard the children of the captivity build it, the temple unto the Lord Yahweh God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your power as ye do, and we do sacrifices to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chiefs of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build in house of our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord Yahweh, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, have commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hand of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So they successfully hindered us, but we eventually got the building done, showing you that these people, just like when we got out of the land of Egypt, they were all moved with fear and they were angry because we came out of captivity. We came back to who we are that moved the nations to wrath. That's his whole purpose in life is to stop the Hebrew Israelites. Don't tell, don't, he doesn't care about anything else that goes on in the world. I think just about every week you hear about a story, more stories about Catholic priests and children and trafficking and molestation. He's silent. He has nothing to say. But if he hears or sees an Israelite make a, a stumble at camp or something or get into a brawl at camp because somebody got mad at what they said. Now it's OK. We got to jump on this quick because the goal is to portray us as violent, angry because the goal is just to stop us. And, you know, as what the scripture says, and they think they're going to win because they're in the power seat because Esau Edom is in the control. And they know that their time is up, but they think because they have the force of the sword, because they have uh, laws in place, because they can use terms like anti-Amalek, they could try to shut you down by fear and all that. They believe that they can stop this. But what does the scripture says? Acts 5 and 29. But if ye if the be of Yahweh, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against Yahweh. You're fighting against Yahweh and you're going to fail miserably. So you're outed, man. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say. You can't approach no Israelite camp because we can simply just I'm, I'm bringing up this, everything that's going on in the world. And I'm going to show that you're a hypocrite on camera by not defending the Messiah and his existence, by not being willing to speak against Judaism and the state of Israel with their what they're doing, what they've been doing, Christians being killed and et cetera. You're just one big, big, fat phony. OK. With that, I say shalom.